Welcome to Research Perch from the Massage Therapy Foundation. Short, practical insights into massage therapy research and how it can benefit your practice. Hey everyone, welcome back to Research Perch from the Massage Therapy Foundation. I'm Michael Reynolds, Chair of the Marketing Committee, and uh, we're glad you've joined us today. Here as always with Ruth Werner and Nikki Monk. Nikki, how are you? Doing great. Thanks, Michael. Great. Glad we can hear you. I had some audio trouble at first there. And Ruth, you're joining us from, uh, you're on the road still, right? Uh, yeah, it's still in beautiful downtown Washington, D.C. Awesome. Any time for sightseeing? Um, well, not, um, you know, only uh, incidentally because I had a meeting in downtown, so I got to go by the National Archives and stuff like that. It's oh, amazing. Beautiful. I love D.C. I spent a lot of time there. It's yeah. a great town. So. All right, so uh, for those who are just joining us, uh, Research Perch is dedicated to unpacking articles from the International Journal of Massage Therapy, I'm sorry, Massage and Body Work. I'm, boy, I just really messed that up, didn't I? <laughs> I say it every single time perfectly, and now I just goofed it up. Let's start over. So this is from the International Journal of Therapeutic Massage and Body Work. There you or go. Or IJTMB for short, and it's at IJTMB.org. Whew, got through it. So. Um, so for those of you who've been with us for a while, you know our format. We, uh, we have some lively discussion around these articles and how they relate to you, the practicing massage therapist, and kind of bridge the gap between um, the, pra the world of practice and then uh, the research that, that kind of affects you as a massage therapist. So uh, today we are discussing uh, a case report, and the case report is the effect of massage therapy on a woman with thoracic outlet syndrome. Um, so the first thing I'm going to ask here is, uh, Ruth, would you mind helping us out or helping me out anyway by defining uh, what thoracic outlet syndrome is? Absolutely. And um, I, I expect this will be review for most of our listeners. Um, a lot of people have encountered this condition either in themselves or through their clientele. So with thoracic outlet syndrome, it's an impingement syndrome where um, parts of the brachial plexus and or the... Um, uh, major blood supply to the arm become impinged and and the locations basically are somewhere between uh, the uh, transverse processes of the neck and uh, just past the clavicle so so typically we talk about it as involving the scalenes um, where the brachial plexus runs under the clavicle and the pec minor um, and uh, if, so, for instance, if there's something going, something funny with the ribs or something like uh, a, a cervical rib is a fairly common um, anomaly where one or both of the transverse processes at C7 get very, very long, um, or sometimes there are just bands of fascia in there. And the brachial plexus or um, major uh, artery or major vein in, t in the coming up through this area can become impinged. And the consequence then is um, numbness, numb likeness, paresthesia, which is a fancy word for neurological symptoms like tingling, um, weakness, coldness, a feeling of fullness. All of these are possible symptoms that can be generated when we have pressure here in the neck and um, and front of the of the chest area, but we can feel them all the way down our arm, or sometimes, as in this case, really the center of her symptoms, this client's symptoms, were in her forearm and her hands. Um, so the goal then with someone who has thoracic outlet syndrome is to see what can be done to take pressure off of the affected um, structures. Uh, and and surgically, very often that means you know a surgical correction, say to the to the, to uh, an extra wide cervical vertebra or clipping the bands of fascia that can happen. Um, but as you can imagine, the amount of scar tissue that might accumulate in that area doesn't give uh, it, you know this sort of um, uh, inter uh, influences the prognosis for a surgical intervention for thoracic outlet syndrome. So. More typically, people pursue non-invasive non options first, including massage and physical therapy and, and some other things. So, okay. um, so this, is a, this is a case where we had a middle-aged woman. I, I forget how old she was. I want to say 56, something uh, like that. 56, yes. Yeah, who had had it bilaterally for quite a long time. And then was um, curious if her massage therapist would be able to help her reduce some of her symptoms. And, um, and, and she used a, a couple of really interesting tools to, um, to do her assessment and to track her progress. And I'm eager to hear what, what Nikki has to say about these. But 
Um, I will say that this began as a case report, I believe while this person was in school and the foundation got it as an entrance in our case report contest and this was um, our gold winner. Yes. Um, and she, uh, this, this writer, her name is Mary Wakefield, comes from a school in New Zealand and we were just really excited to be able to bring her to the United States to present these findings at the AMTA meeting and I believe this was the meeting that was in um, uh, Raleigh. Raleigh, North Carolina, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you, Ruth. I appreciate you defining that. It sounds uh, very unpleasant. And uh, I also, um, this is a case report. And for those who may be just joining us, or maybe those like myself sometimes who need a refresher, um, a case report uh, is a massage therapist making an observation in a clinical setting. Uh, did I, can I get the gist of it still? The, yes. I can be yes. taught. See, I'm learning. I'm learning. Yes. Yeah, the, it's one therapist and one client, and they work on achieving some goals together. Got yes. it. Okay, great. So this is a case report, and it looks like the um, the implementation was over an eight-week period, uh, consisting of six 50-minute bodywork sessions. So, uh, Nikki, do you want to oh, – I'm sorry. Go ahead, Nikki. No, no five zero. It almost sounded like you said fifteen. Oh yeah, five zero, five zero, uh, fifty okay. minutes, and just less than an hour. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, Nikki, go ahead. What What are your thoughts on uh, on this particular case report? Well, so there's there's several things that I would like to point out about about this uh, case report. One of the things is that while when she first presented this case report in Raleigh, um, the TMB adapted care guidelines had not been published yet. And while this one was already in review, I was the editor for this, and so I had the, um, I knew what those guidelines were going to be, and so of course the TMB care uh, guidelines are the uh, reporting guidelines for case reports, and this is adapted for therapeutic massage and body work. And so one of the things that um, Mary did really nicely was follow the guidelines, and so she did a great job in discussing the therapist description. She did a really great job in uh, very succinctly talking about the treatments that she provided in a general way. So she gives a, um, a table and highlights how she utilized uh, myofascial release, neuromuscular therapy techniques. She does some cranial sacral therapy in here and some lymph drainage and then also some um, uh, muscle energy work. And she uh, shows about how much time she spent in, uh, on each of these pieces and in what areas of the body she did. And so while every treatment is unique, a massage therapist could come based on this and, and to some degree replicate the treatment that was given to this woman. Okay, so there's, so there's that piece. Hmm. Um, as you say, it was uh, six sessions of 50 minutes with this treatment given over eight weeks. So initially the thought had been that it was going to be weekly uh, the client became ill after the fifth session unrelated to the treatment, and so they picked up and did that last treatment um, later, a couple weeks later. Um, so going to what the assessments were, so one of the things that I think massage therapists have real trouble with in their practice is what is a tangible measurement uh, option that I can have? So they can do a uh, range of motion, okay, well we can do visual analog scales of pain, but pain, and in fact, pain in this wasn't really the issue in this situation. Right. This particular client was having bilat was having numbness and dead rubbery feeling in their arms. Well, how do you qualify or quantify that outside of just the person's experience? Well, there's a really great measure out there that's called the Measure Your Own Medical Outcomes Profile. And it's a really cool piece because it, it offers up um, four different Likert scales. Likert scale being the, um, uh, was it a five point or seven point Likert? It's usually oh, five points. Five points, okay. And from one end being best possible outcome to worst experience ever. And so then you can rate what is your problem, what do you want to come out of this, what are your symptoms, and she was able to put in, my symptoms were numbness, dead rubbery feeling. So at the beginning, she was able to quantify for her experience what that was. And then there, it's, it's actually a validated um, measure that I think it's, oh, I can't remember if it's one point or two point change is clinically meaningful change. And she had a, she had a two point something change, right? 2.3. Oh, yeah, and, and she had clinically meaningful uh, change in her outcomes with this. Yes, as measured by this. 
but it, it uh, offers up four different domains that it can measure. So first, the two things that the patient or the client identifies as important to them. It's a patient-centered measure, right? So what is it important to them? The other one is activity in relation to their, to their symptoms, and then also their overall well-being. And so you're able to measure these pieces with this particular measure. So the range of motion, pretty straightforward. And then hers is um, uh, that MYMOP2. You can find that online as a free measurement that if somebody else wants to use. And so it really addresses some problems that uh, practitioners have on, well, how can I measure this in a, in a reliable way that's meaningful to the patients as well or clients as well? Hmm. Right, well, and, and, and in addition to, sorry, say it again, Michael? No, no, I was, go, I was referring to you. Go ahead, Ruth. Oh, okay. Um, so I, I love, this, isn't, this is not the first time we've seen the MIMOP2 come up in a case report. I'm thrilled that people are finding this tool mm -hmm. um, because as Nikki says, you know, when, when we're dealing with one-on-one -on -one situations, and really what this client wants more than anything is to lose this dead rubbery feeling. Well, you know, we're not going to find a, a, an automa you know, a, a validated tool about dead rubbery feeling. Yeah. Um, but so the MyMop allows us to, to customize for our individual clients. I think it's a wonderful resource. Um, but in addition to the MyMop, this therapist also used postural analysis with a grid chart so that there were before and after photos where we could line up scapula and where the shoulders were and the, the um, degree of supination of the hands and things like that. Um, and then she, you know, also tested for range of motion and a couple of uh, traditional thoracic outlet syndrome tests. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. I would point out that her method of range of motion measurement is a little different. She didn't use a guidometer. Um, she used a tape measure. And so this is something that, you know, we can... Oh boy, somebody's calling me. How do I make that stop? I heard that chiming sound. I thought that was me. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's a pleasant like chime, too, Nikki. It's a very pleasant ring. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mine sounds like a yeah. yeah. So anyway, but just another another way to um, uh, do a range of motion. Mm -hmm. Well, the outcome seemed pretty positive. Am I? Yes. Am I uh, interpreting that correctly? Yes. This this particular uh, client had a great outcome. Yeah. Uh, her bilateral numbness and lost this dead rubbery feeling in her forearm and her hands and what, lo what I loved about this is is because there was a delay in the finishing of the case report and when it was getting ready for publication um, and so our author was able to call her client back a year later to um, to interview her about how her symptoms had continued and she was still having good results a year later mm -hmm. Well, I always like how case reports end. This one ends the uh, in a very familiar way. It says further research is needed to fully understand the effect <laughs> of massage for uh, TOS uh, symptoms or thoracic outlet syndrome symptoms. Which um, I love that because now that I, you know, at the beginning of this um, this research purge program, you know, I was very ignorant to a lot of uh, you know research terminology, a lot of you know what what case report is versus other things, and how all this works and the research pyramid and. Um, I hope our listeners have kind of gone through this journey with me and feel the same way. And I feel like I've gotten a much deeper understanding about how the world of research works in massage therapy. And so I love being able to see now, okay, this case report is a bridge into, you know, making a case for, okay, it looks like uh, it does make sense to, um, to conduct more research because we have promising results that massage therapists can, can observe and understand and really benefit from, and clients can benefit from as well. So I love understanding now that a case report is a great first step toward bridging that, uh, that process into further research. So uh, it's really exciting for me to understand that. Maybe it's just me. But. <laughs> well, and, and, and by her really articulating what, what her treatment was like, and this is and this is somebody at a at a early stage in her career, right? And so this is being able to show that somebody with some foundation training with these with these techniques were able to be really effective for somebody. So this I think this from a marketing standpoint, Michael, for uh, new therapists coming out, this is a really nice thing to point to that um, because there, there's sometimes this. Uh, 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 idea that you have to have a whole lot of experience and a whole lot of tools in your tool belt to really be effective. But this is an example of how um, even a, a student or a, a young practitioner uh, um, can be very effective. 
Yeah, this is great. I, uh, I yeah, you're right. I, you're speaking my language. I love the business case for how it, how it helps massage therapists in a business and marketing setting as well. So yeah, I appreciate that. I, I love nice. I, I love case reports because they're just to me they're so nice and tidy. It's like okay, here's somebody yeah. making an observation. Here's what happened. Was it a positive or outcome or not? And you know, if so, where do we go from here? It's just very nice and tidy. So I really love these case reports because they're such they're so easy for me to understand and to digest. So. Okay. I would like to um, close with a comment about um, this particular author as well and the student. Um, this is one, that, as Ruth mentioned, she reported this at the Riley AMTA National Convention, which was two, three years ago, Ruth. So, one, two, Riley? I think it was three years ago. Okay, so three years ago. And she submitted the paper uh, to IJTMB. Um, a, about a year and a half, two years ago. And this was a process that she really worked hard to get this paper into a, into a place that was really tight, it's well written, it's very, um, it's very well researched from the backgrounds and significance perspective. And she did a really great job presenting it. And I just want to give a shout out to her um, um, continuation in this and her efforts that she uh, took this to publication because it's an important piece. And had she let the process of publication overwhelm her, we wouldn't have um, this in the literature base. Thank you, Nikki. That, Thank you. Yeah. Oh, Nikki, that's really a wonderful thing to say, and I'll I'll make sure that Mary knows, um, you know, when we when this goes to air, because she sure. and all of her all of her cohorts should definitely see it. Um, Absolutely. She has done a lot here to set a bar for uh, uh, for writing a great case report. And so I, I really encourage our listeners to take a look at it and, and, you know, make a mental translation about how this fits for you and your client who has carpal tunnel syndrome or your client who has irritable bowel or your client who has, um, you know, back pain. Okay. Everybody can use a MIMOP, right? And, uh, um, and as long as you're tracking your results in a way that makes some sense, you can come up with a really, really important Thing to say even though it's just you and it, even though it's just one person mm -hmm. absolutely case reports can make a really huge difference and don't be and, and even if it's somebody with uh, thoracic outlet syndrome right why not do it again by, by doing multiple case reports especially when they're reported in, in, in standardized way like the TMB care guidelines are able to outline once we get enough of them out there we're able to actually put these together and say something more because things are right. being reported similarly. So there's the call, folks. More case reports yeah, make, an impact, make an impact on the field and inform research. Thank you very much, Nikki. Yeah. Well, thank you both so much for your time today. I really appreciate it, as always. And uh, for our listeners, thank you so much again for joining us. I really encourage you to uh, download the entire article. Um, if you go to ijtmb.org, and if you search for the author, Wakefield, if you search for that name, uh, it'll come up. It's uh, Again, the title is Effects of Massage Therapy on a Woman with Thoracic Outlet Syndrome. should be pretty easy to find. On the blog, we'll uh, link it below as well. So, um, as always, if you're listening, uh, check out the MassageTherapyFoundation.org website where you can watch this in video format and, of course, get the show notes and download the article there. Uh, if you're watching, please uh, look below, and there's a link to both the iTunes podcast version and the Stitcher podcast version for Android. So, uh, multiple formats to make your life easier. So, uh, Nikki, thank Ruth, thank you so much for your time today. A real pleasure. And uh, thanks, everyone, for joining us. We'll see you next time. Absolutely. Bye, guys. See you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Research Perch. Please send feedback or questions to perch at massagetherapyfoundation.org. See you next time.